today's video, we're going to continue from where we left off from the last What is Mora video. So we're going to navigate the uh, whiteboard in Mora and basically go over all this icon. And as a Scrum Master or an Agile facilitator, what would you look out for? Or what are some things you should be mindful of while you navigate your mirror board? Welcome back to Aisha Scrum Platform. I'm very happy to have you all join the platform. From my existing subscribers and my new subscribers, I welcome you all to the channel. And thank you all for subscribing and thank you all for watching. And by the way, if you are interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email us at admin at aishascrumtech.com. All right, so let's get to the video. If you all recall, in my last video, I was showing you all these different icons and these different templates about how you can create that. So today, I just want to go over like the icon on the board, like how you can invite people into the board and also how to go over this, um, all of these different icons we have. So the first thing first, if you plan to facilitate a daily scrum, which I plan for us to basically do this in my next video, uh, you should be the one creating the moral space and the moral template. And the reason why is that so you can have the facilitator uh, admin rights, right? So as you that created the board, then you own the board, then you can have this extra facilitator uh, icons that only you, the facilitator, we have. Like, for example, when it comes to timer, right? We have timer at the top. Uh, and if you want to set, like, let's say you want to do like a quick icebreaker with your team and you want to set the timer for like five minutes, you just click on the timer and you click on, you go minus the time and you add the time and you basically will hit start and you set the timer. So it's good to time box some of the activities you'll be doing as you plan to lead any workshop or any meeting. So for each of those uh, activities or breakout room sessions you plan to do, it's good to always use the timer so it can help keep you all in track, right? And you go to the icon as the facilitator and you choose the timer you want. You can choose any sound. I always use the airplane mode and it makes the sound ding done uh, at the end of it. And when we get to that, so then you hit start and when it's done, it's going to ring alarm Then everyone should come back to the board or stop what they were doing, if they're writing or anything. So that's one. So the next icon we have is voting, right? So we all know at the end of our retrospective, we're going to want to vote on action item or things that we plan to work on next as a team. And that's where the voting icon will come in place. Then you choose start voting. Because this one, I have to show you all how to do this. There's that little trick with this. Uh, so you're going to name the session, let's say, uh, retro um, action item. Look at me spelling that uh, item. So then you're going to give um, votes. I'm going to give one vote per person, you know, because for if you want more people to have more votes, you can add like two, three, four, five, so each person can have that much votes. But in my own case, I'm going to make this to be one vote per person because that's the, how much vote I want each person to have. And then who can end the vote? So that's why you have to create the template so then you can have this right. So basically, just me and uh, facilitator, basically you as the facilitator will end the voting session. Or you can change this to any member, but I've always keep it as a facilitator because I want to be in control of all of those votes, right? As the facilitator and hopefully as you also as the Scrum Master faculty in some of this workshop or the meetings. So then this is another important area that you must select when, you, when it's time for you to do the vote. Uh, so this area is asking uh, what, do you want to vote, right? What area do you want to give your participants uh, options for them to select things to vote, right? So for me, when I used uh, Mura and we used like uh, our retro templates uh, and the team members, they always will write their, uh, their inputs on the sticky notes. So I will unselect on shapes, I will unselect on images, I will unselect title areas, Headlines, icons, files, I unselected all of that and only leaves the sticky notes. And the sticky notes, so the team members will only have that option. It's just going to show them that option to vote on the sticky notes, right? So it's important you do this because when you do this, then the team can know where uh, they should focus their vote on. So they can just hopefully you drag and move them to that area of 
uh, what we can improve. So then they can go there and select their votes, right? So then this is another area that's very important for you to select. Is it gonna be uh, uh, in the entire canvas, meaning like the whole white spot space, we want them to vote or in a selected section. I will always use selected session because to be honest, then when I select uh, a session, so then it will focus it in that area only, which I will drag it to that space I want them to be at. So then I hit next. So you see right away, uh, it's highlighted this space area because one, that's the sticky notes that I have. I think this is the only area too that I have the sticky notes and um, I have the other shapes and stuff. But let's say I didn't have it here. Uh, this is not the area that I wanted it to be at. Let's say you went and go to what we did well. And then I want to move it to where we can improve. What you just do is basically just select and drag it to that area. Like in this, in this case, I've select, I'm moving the board. You just, I'm actually using my, uh, my Apple laptop. You just slide, or in the case, you can use the mouse and go to that area and drag so you can highlight the place you want the team members to vote, you know? And when that's done, then you see right here, it says that I've given one vote per person. So all the participants were able to come in here and do their votes. So let's say now uh, I'm gonna move it back to the cards, right? So I just go back and highlight that area. And then I'll say, okay, I want them to vote on this area. So each person can put their votes. And then I'll hit start right here. Very important you hit start because if you don't hit the start, then the team members can then see to vote. Then you hit start. And then uh, it also gives them this little education. Aisha has started this voting session. Click a card to add the vote. Shift the click to uh, plus click to remove the vote, right? Your vote is anonymous, which is what you want, right? Uh, which is what I prefer. And some people can be uh, open with that. But I've always made it anonymous. Then I hit begin vote. When you click on begin vote and the team can begin vote and we're going to see about it. I want to select vote on this one. I'll just select on that and it gives it the one vote, right? And it's a one person already voted and Mora will tell you that's why I love Mora so much. It's so easy to use and um, right away people will vote and as people are voting, it's going to be counting it up here. Like your team members, as they are doing their votes, it counts it up here. Then then you now ask the team member uh, who, need, who else will need any more time for the vote? Is everyone done voting? If so, yes, okay. And start telling me I, I have zero votes left because I only gave each person one vote, right? So then when that's done, then I now hit end voting session. And I hit voting session and then it's giving me the results at the bottom. Uh, oh, we only had one vote for this. And then at the end, you see all the different votes that's given for each participant. So then that can help you all come up with your action item. So the next thing we have is the privacy mode, which is very important, right? Um, we can also, you can also, you can also X out of this to just dis, uh, disappear the voting area, right? So the next thing we have is this private mode, right? So this private mode is basically uh, another area that I use a lot when I use Mora. And this private mode is to make the sticky notes private. So we don't know who is imputing or adding the sticky notes, right? So, so what I do always is to go and click on the private notes before the team will start to write on the tickets, right? And I'll let them know too when I'm doing private mode, right? Then we have option here to choose, like uh, keep the authors in this content in animals, or uh, yes, yeah, show the authors when the private modes end. Uh, I've always chose at uh, keep it on uh, in the author when the content is anonymous, and then I will hit start. And when I hit start, they also give us warning that you have started private mode. No one can see what others are doing. Uh, contents you add or edit during the private mode will remain anonymous. And that's exactly what I want. And I hit got it. So then it's going to be anonymous. Contents you add or edit to remain uh, anonymous. So I will also set the timer in this case and give the team members at least five or 10 minutes to input that, uh, what they want to write on the sticky notes. Then after they are done and the timer alarms, then I'm going to tell the team members, okay, now I'm going to come back to share my screen and I'm going to end the private mode. Uh, what extra time do anyone need? You know, then I ask the team members. Then if they do need that extra time, we took it. And if not, I just end the private mode and I come under private mode and I end it.
And then they're also telling me, oh, you will review all content added as well as any changes made to the existing content during the private mode. Then I was like, yes, and or or uh, add or private mode and reveal the content. Then that same thing will happen to you as you do that. Right. So the next icon I would like to show you all is this other icon at the bottom here. Uh, whereby we have this reaction as people are talking about the tags. If you want to use a different emojis or the team want to use different emoji to discuss and use that, that you can also do that down here. And also as a facilitator, if someone gives kudos to someone, we have this celebrate icon that you can choose and the celebratory uh, uh, flowers to drop yeah. down. People can see that, which is nice. And you can also have your acts to be followed. Uh, I know I have to update, upgrade my moral to get that. But as sometimes when people are lost in the whiteboard, people are like, oh, I can't find my stuff. I don't know where things are. Then you can ask them to be followed. Then all the participants will actually follow you. So that's one icon tool we can use, you know. And let's say now I want to invite people or want to share this link. Then you just hit the share um, icon here. And we can add people by email. We can uh, uh, give them, it's very important. Uh, you make them that they can edit, right? Because if you can, even when you put can view only, then they will not able to write on the board. So this is very important to know that when you're inviting people on the board, adding their emails, ensure that you have it as can edit, you know? And then you want to, about the workspace, uh, you can also make this private. If you, just, if you want this only for you and your team, you can have it there as can view. Anyone in that space can view. Or you can also put they can edit the workspace. But for the most part, uh, when it comes to the uh, Aisha workspace, so when I add those people, they can edit and Aisha workspace. If they want to edit, if I want them to edit my whole space, I can do that. But for the most part, I can give view in this area. That's why I give them editing rights, so they can come to the board and actually edit. And then I copy the link. And let's say so I don't want to add people by email. You can also just copy the link. Uh, when you copy the link, you go to the chat box and you paste it in your team's chat or any chat so people can have access to the board. That's also you can do that, you know. Uh, and you can come here, you'll see the members of people in the board. And if you have like an outline of if you're doing a workshop, you have like your outline set up, you can also click on this outline. It can tell you, every, tell you everything or where you are in this board. In the next video, I plan to show you all how to use... um moral to run the whole retrospective i'm going to be role playing how to do a retrospective in the moral space and i hope to see you all in that video if you are interested in mentorship do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com and if you've been finding this content valuable please like and subscribe to my channel my goal is to get to a 10,000 subscriber by next year of august thank you all for watching and see you all again in my next video